Nine races down at seven different venues over three provinces have seen over 30 drivers and their teams compete for a purse well over $900,000. Today, a champion will be crowned. A rookie will be recognized. A pit crew will come to light. And a season will come to a close. The tenth and final event of the GM Motorsport National Stock Car Series from Mosport International Raceway in Southern Ontario, the GM Motorsport 200. The GM Motorsport Hour, brought to you by General Motors of Canada Limited. Quality GM parts, the expert choice. And by Sony, the one and only. Series leader Campbellville, Ontario native Junior Hanley has all but locked up the 1991 GM Motorsport National Stock Car Championship, but not without difficulty. Earlier during qualifying, Junior put his lead into jeopardy with not one but two loops in turn one, luckily resulting in no major damage. But a fourth row start for today. Defending champion, Oshawa, Ontario native Randy McDonald, playing without Lady Luck this season, has come out full bore, establishing a new track speed record during qualifying, showing a determination for victory. Yeah, unfortunately, we have to give up the championship this year. Uh, it's real tight between second, third, fourth, and fifth, so this is a big race for us. Uh, we really need to come home second anyway. It'd be good to win the race. We had a good semi feature, and we started on the pole, so 200 laps is a long time. Anything can happen. Um, just have to wait and see. In a tight race for second place honors, number 48 Robbie Crouch, former six-time ACT champion, has also seen Lady Luck abandon him this season. Well, it's been a fair season. I mean, nothing great, but uh, had a lot of promise at the beginning in the first few races, and then uh, uh, dry streak and uh, some problems that we had to overcome. And you know, now we seem to be bouncing back a little bit and getting some consistent finishes. So uh, you know, we keep working hard and keep trying to do things with the car and uh, learn some things and uh, you know so make the season a worthwhile season and a new rookie will be crowned number one ex Brad Layton leading contender for this year's honors is showing that he belongs on this tour well I, f I feel that I really found the home of the ACT and the GM Motorsports it's um, you know it's a real good sport I enjoy racing I love the guys I'm working with um, you know, I'm not a super speedway runner, so it's I'm not headed to Winston Cup, I don't believe, um, unless I inherit or win the Mega Bucks. So, in, uh, I just want to be here, I'll sort of be the next Robbie Crouch. You know, it's if I can get a championship underneath that belt in the next few years, um, it'll be really helpful. Oh, the weatherman is cooperating ideally for the finale of the GM National Stock Car Series Championship for 1991. Here it is at most for the GM 200 about to happen. Hello, I'm Jim Paulson with our co-host on the show, Dave Moody. It's been sort of Junior Hanley's track this year, David. Well, what track hasn't been Junior Hanley's track so far? In nine races on the GM Series to date, he's won six. He's yet to finish out of the top five. He's uh, had a tremendous season. I wonder if the signs are bad for him, though. In the semi, he was spinning. Uh, things have not been going well for him this weekend. He's had a fast car, but he has hasn't had a lot of luck. He looped the car twice in the semi feature, and as a result, he won't be starting quite as far up as he's used to this year. Well, he's kind of got it nailed down this year, but the fight is for second. It's going to be a real battle for that position today. Randy McDonald in pretty good shape there, but there are a lot of folks on his tail. There are indeed. Just 74 points between the second place driver, Randy McDonald, and the number seven driver, Roger LaPearl. So a good day can move some drivers way up, and a bad day could cost them dearly. How about some other locals we might mention? Uh, young Derek Lynch has got a good shot today, David. Always a favorite here, of course. He's from right down the road in Norwood, Ontario. And another Ontario driver, Sheffield, Ontario's Gord Bennett, has run very well in qualifying. Let's not ignore the American crowd. Beaver Dragon has got a good shot. Robbie Crouch, he's won so many championships, uh, he'd at least like a second. 
Indeed he would, and uh, when you come to Mosport, it tends to favor the veterans. And Beaver Dragon, Robbie Crouch, they've been doing it as, as long as anyone here on the GM Series. You know, it's been a good fight all season for those uh, Rookie of the Year honors as well. It has indeed. Brad Layton now has locked up the freshman honors on the American-Canadian Tour. That's a big load off his shoulders. He's ready just to go race today. A lot of drama involved in this event here at Mosport today, and with more on Randy's situation, let's go down to Pit Row, and here's Eric Hollow. The GM Parts Pro Shop team continues to try and find speed from this Chevy aluminum. Most recently, they've added this piece of aluminum, like an air dam. It prevents the turbulent air from underneath the hood from entering the carburetor. When the hood is closed, only the clean air moving over top of the hood gets in. They think this is going to add speed to the car. Now, Randy has not won a race yet this year, but he set a new track record here yesterday, and he won the semi. He sits on the pole for today's race. The team thinks the car is dialed in today. So with his extra treats, there goes the man. Randy McDonald, 0-1, moves out. The good friends from GM wrap up the tailgate party. We're ready to go for the finale. And the starting grid for this afternoon's GM Motorsport finale. Randy McDonald once again on the point with a new track record in the GM Parts Pro Shop machine. Outside, Ralph Nason from Unity, Maine in a Chrysler LeBaron. Row number two on the inside, the Nova Scotia champion, Rolly McDonald in his Chevrolet Lumina. Outside McDonald to go fourth, young Derek Lynch from Norwood, Ontario on his home track here this afternoon. Row number three, the veteran Roger LaPerle of St. Denis, Quebec in the St. Pierre auction car number double zero. Outside, the six-time champion, Robbie Kraut of Georgia, Vermont. In row number four to go seventh, he's clinched the GM title, Junior Hanley of Campbellville, Ontario in the 72. Outside, rookie Danny Knoll Jr. of Buffalo, New York in the Mobile One Chevrolet. Jim Wiersma of London, Ontario with his best ever GM Series qualifying effort goes in row five. Alongside Dan Beatty of Barry, Vermont in the Champlain Farms Buick. In row number six, the Canadian veteran Claude Leclerc and Bonsai Gordy Bennett from Sheffield, Ontario. Robbie Thompson and Harmon Beaver Dragon, the two-time champion in row number seven. Row eight to local Rob Clark of London, Ontario and the great John Paul Cabana, Buzzy Pizanson and Steve Monroe in car number 08 go side by side in nine. Row 10 to Donald Forte and Bill Zardo Jr. Row 11, Dan Corcoran and Quebec's Yvonne Bedard. In row number 12 this afternoon, local John Greedy and Dave Taylor. Row number 13, Joe Gonsalves in car number seven, and the top rookie, the 1X of Brad Layton. Row 14, Vermonter Blair Bassett and Ontario's Bill Zardo Sr., Bill Snowden and Kevin LePage in car number 21, way back in row number 15. Row 16, Vito Maselli and Sylvain Metivier, the Quebec driver. Row 17, Ron Saldi and local Pete Shepard. Full field, they come down for the green flag, and Randy McDonald grabs it, heading up toward corner one. Mason beside him, and Mason, in fact, may end up in third here in a moment. Randy McDonald showing the speed that got him that new track record, driving away with the lead on the back straightaway. Ralph Nason ducks that brilliant yellow car number 10 down into the number two spot. McDonald, no surprise after his qualifying effort, is away with the lead as they cross the line to complete lap one. Randy has had such a great day in all of the events leading up to, of course, this, the big finale. Junior Handling has not had a good day, and Nason looks so strong here so far. Now let's have a look at uh, some of the field from Robbie Crouch, running a little further back early. Crouch right on the back bumper of the Derek Lynch automobile as they top out over 140 miles an hour at the end of the back straightaway. Right on the back bumper of Lynch, we've got a spin in the corner. That's Yvon Bedard in car number nine. Take a look at the replay and you can see him anxious moment for Brad Layton in the 1X machine as he narrowly avoids. That's Bill Zardo in the 46, but everybody got by and Yvonne Bedard is back underway. A neat spin uh, off the top. We hope the rest of this event, of course, for our finale goes as neatly. Here we look at Nason one more time, leading a whole batch of folks and one in the midst of that batch crawling his way up is Junior Hanley. Junior Hanley alongside, right in front of Robbie Crouch as he looks down to the inside of Rolly McDonald. And the Nova Scotia champion is going to lose one, make it two as Hanley gets underneath. Crouch trying to follow him through. Junior Hanley, as usual, is on the move early. Let's look at this one more time. Here's Junior Hanley moving up on Roley McDonald, number 13. By the way, nice to see Roley back here at most sports. And very smoothly, Junior makes that move, comes by. He may be the champion, but he wants a win today as well. 
Junior Hanley has never been known for resting on his laurels. He has won six out of the nine GM Series races this year. He'd love to make it a 700 batting average for the season, but he's going to have his work cut out for him. This most Port Oval, very challenging indeed, as Hanley now goes to the outside of the outside pole sitter, Ralph Nason. And you know, Robbie Grugs is right in there beside him, and Robbie is not going to let any of this run away from him either. In fact, Robbie comes through. He's up on Nason. He puts Hanley down a notch. What a great move by Robbie Crouch as he used the lap car of Vito Michelli on the inside, past both Rolly McDonald and Junior Hanley going into the corner. And that's the kind of move that has made Robbie Crouch a six-time American Canadian Tour champion. His hopes for the GM title obviously are out the window for this year, but Crouch wants this race badly as he goes to the outside of Nason now. Interesting in this final event to see Nason running so strong. And the other drivers earlier today, Dave, telling me that uh, of all the toughies in this field, they think Nason is certainly one of them. None tougher than racing Ralph Nason, the 30-year veteran from Unity, Maine. He's been a Mopar man all his life, but right now he's going backwards. As Crouch goes to the outside, leads Junior Hanley with him. Crouch moves up, Hanley moves up, and right behind Nason now is Roley McDonald. Look for Roley McDonald to perhaps make a move. He'll be trying to reel Nason in. He comes up high. Oh, another incident. That's Don Forte in the Isolon Chevrolet again, spinning to a stop in the corner. This time, everybody's got a good line on it. They go high to the outside. Forte is back under power in the 42. Let's see if we can get a replay, see what happens. It looked like it might have been a tap. I don't want to make any accusations, of course, but uh, it uh, certainly got him a little out of whack. So Donald Forte brings it in along pit row, but does not appear to be major damage. Dave. No, just a little bump from behind for uh, Donald Forte. Has it back underway. McDonald, Crouch, Hanley, Nason, and Rolly McDonald at the front. You've been in the lead since the beginning. Randy says everything's okay so far? Yeah, everything seems fine in the car right now. We're just in a bit of uh, lap traffic, but everything seems fine right now. You gonna go the whole distance without pitting? I think we should be able to make it. We'll, right now, just depend on tires, whether he cuts a tire or something like that, or the way the car's handling more. But if he does come in, we're gonna put gas in it. No tires? Pardon me? No tires? Uh, right now, it's really just depends on my call right on that. Randy will determine that as the race goes on. Can you hold off Junior Hanley today? I think so. We had a, we, we were pretty fast with him yesterday, but time will tell. Junior's a good charger. And despite Eric Hollow's best efforts, those crew chiefs a pretty tight-lipped bunch on pit road. And honest, this Robbie Crouch crew are not trying to tune in on what Ken has to say there to gain some insight in this race. This relates to last night's pit stop competition. Now, after five events going up to most sports, Sardo Sr. on top, then Cabana, Crouch sitting in third, then Junior Hanley fourth, Ralph Nason's team back in fifth. Here's what happened last night at the final. In the final round, the Robbie Crouch team, the Glen Wright Motorsports operation, crew chief by Carl Osha, keep an eye on this pit stop as the defending champions of the GM Parts National Pit Stop Competition go to work. Two right side tires, a simulated tank of gas, and a clean windshield. Don't blink, folks, because it's just about over. The car is down and away in an all-time record for the GM Parts Competition of 16.6 seconds. 16.6 by over a half second, the fastest stop in the history of competition. Now in this contest, the best two out of three pit stops earns the title, and that puts Robbie Crouch's crew in a pretty good position to claim the overall. Did you think you had a 16-6 in you when we started today? Uh, we felt that we could be good uh, for a long time, but we've never pulled one off, so uh, it was just uh, a little bit of luck in there. You're going to need another good one. Yeah, that's for sure. Good luck. Carl Osha and Brian Latouche, the co-crew chiefs for the Robbie Crouch crew. Last time out, they set the all-time record at 16.6 seconds. They're going to need to do this in 18.2 seconds or less to take the overall lead. Here we go. The defending GM Parts Pit Stop champions, they need an 18.2 or less. 18.227 or less. And that is definitely doable for this team. But the pressure is on right now. The car is down and away. Good stop for the Tampa Tornado crew. The time for the Crouch team. 17.594.
No penalties for Robbie Crouch. The overall time, 34.194 for the second consecutive season. Your champions of the GM Parts National Pit Stop Competition, the Glen Wright Motorsports team of Robbie Crouch. Okay, on behalf of General Motors Parts and uh, our General Motors dealers across the country, it's indeed a pleasure to present this to you again this year. Are you guys going to make a habit of this? <laughs> we hope so. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank GM Parts for presenting this. Uh, really did a good job. It uh, gives us a chance to show what we do down here, and we thank GM for that. Thank you. And on the left of your screen, our good friend Les Kudlow of GM Parts, uh, honoring the Crouch team season-long point standings. It was Bill Sarno Sr. on top of 65. But boy, when it came down to the crunch last night at Mosport, the team where Robbie Crouch, they came back again this year. They're not getting older, they're getting better. They are indeed, and we are set for a green flag restart with Randy McDonald, the leader, on the outside of McDonald, the white automobile. That's the lapped car of John Greedy, the local driver from just up the road in Brampton, on Brampton, Ontario, running on his home racetrack. Green flag is out, and the field is underway, and Randy McDonald drives away hard into turn number one. Oh, oh look, look out! Greedy gets into it from behind, and a hard smash oh. into the outside wall. A very serious crash involving Randy McDonald and John Greedy. McDonald going tail first into the wall. Mc, uh, Greedy rather head on into the concrete. And that is without a doubt the hardest crash we have seen in many, many years on the American Canadian Tour and the GM Series. Oh, that was heart stopping, uh, Dave. Uh, and uh, both of them just pounding into that concrete. Now, we've seen some other uh, vicious crashes here at Mosport in the past. But uh, look at this. The team are out now. Oh, no. They are waving uh, the ambulance unit over here for uh, Randy McDonald, so there could be a problem in car. John Grady is out of the car immediately checking on Randy McDonald, but uh, it appears indeed that McDonald has been shaken up, and no wonder, Jim, as that car went at literally 120 or 130 miles an hour backwards into that solid concrete retaining wall, and you can see McDonald has been badly shaken up. The safety crews, of course, are on the scene immediately, and you can see the damage to the back end of the GM Parts Pro Shop automobile. McDonald, who, uh, whose weekend has come to a very savage end indeed. Let's take a look at it on the replay. McDonald, of course, leading it off the inside pole. Greedy, the lapped automobile, goes into the corner, makes contact, as you can see, hard with the back end of Randy McDonald's car number 01. And I guess the rest of this needs no commentary whatsoever. Just a vicious crash into the wall. In fact, uh, just watching the two cars now, they uh, continue just by inertia up into the wall. Heavy hit for both. Maybe fortunate, actually, that uh, Randy went into it uh, rear end first. Well, at the very best, we can say that the, the specially constructed seat on that automobile shielded Randy McDonald from the worst of the impact. John Greedy, fortunately for him, hit the wall a little bit side saddle and was able to deflect part of the, bl the blow. But, man, that is harder than anyone wants to hit anything at any time. And uh, our, our best wishes go to Randy McDonald right now as those safety crews attend to him at the top of turn number one and two. Well, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, just an over-aggressive uh, John Greedy, perhaps, uh, on the restart, but uh, he didn't... Uh seemed to back off. He pounded into Randy going uh, in there between corners one and two, Dave. Very unusual circumstance to say the least. You can see John Grady talking to the chief and technical inspector of the GM Motorsport Series, Stan Meserve. I would uh, hazard a guess that there might have been some kind of a failure on the automobile, uh, most likely in the brake department, because uh, for a lapped automobile like John Greedy, just to pile into the back of Randy McDonald is highly unusual. That car was going completely too fast into the corner. I guarantee John Greedy didn't get in that hard because he wanted to. Well, John Greedy, uh, John's dad, by the way, uh, owned Delaware back in those early 60s. It's a uh, long-term racing family uh, involved in this particular incident. I can't imagine it uh, being deliberate in any sense of the word at all, uh, Dave, and uh, John got out of the car. Uh, he's the one who went in head first. Uh, looks like still a problem here with Randy. Well, they're going to take their time, no question, with McDonald, whether or not he is injured. They're going to give him time to clear the cobwebs, and I guess this one deserves another look. Again, you can see Greedy on the bottom of the racetrack piles hard into McDonald, and even now, no brake smoke coming off no. that automobile. I've got to believe some kind of a mechanical failure, and well, from here on, it's going to be hard to tell what happened with that car, because there's not a lot left of either automobile. John Greedy, you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. What happened out there? On the restart, I tucked down behind Randy, come down the front straight away. When I put on the brakes, there was just nothing there. And I tried to go on the inside in the gravel to try not to, you know, wreck the leader. And fortunately, I took him. How's the track out there? 
Oh, the truck's good. The car was working good. Uh, I was quite happy with the way things were going. How's Randy? Uh, I think Randy was uh, locked out. I don't know if he's conscious yet or not. Uh, they asked for everybody to leave, so I think I, we hit the wall mighty hard, really hard. Hopefully he's all right. Sorry to hear that, John. I hope he's fine. Thank you. Brampton, Ontario's John Gritty, very likable young man and obviously very concerned at this point uh, of the afternoon, Dave. Obviously very shaken by what happened up there, and I think he's more concerned with Randy McDonald than he is with himself or his own race car. You can see McDonald being lifted out of the race car, and uh, obviously he will be transported to hospital as soon as possible. The early reports we have from the scene is that Randy McDonald is conscious. He is talking to the rescue crews, so that, at the uh, at the very least, is cause for, uh, for some encouragement, but without question, I mean, there's no way to, to trivialize what happened up there at the top of two. An absolutely vicious lick. Race leader now is Robbie Crouch in number 48. We'll be back with a restart. We're back at Most Sport under a red flag situation because of the incident involving this young man, Randy McDonald and John Greedy, uh, between corners one and two. The race has been stopped uh, right at the end of the ambulance. Here's Gina McDonald, Randy's wife, understandably concerned at this point. As Randy was loaded into the ambulance, they had the cervical collar on. That's not necessarily a cause uh, for concern. If they're going to err, they're going to err on the side of safety. Let's get a look at this thing literally from the driver's seat of the GM Parts Pro Shop Chevrolet. Randy McDonald, of course, who at the time was the leader of the race, coming out of turn number four, looking for the green flag, back under racing conditions. Let's listen to what happened. And here's the view from Brad Layton's car as everybody tried to make their way through. Down on pit road, Wayne got F, the crew chief. How's Randy? Uh, he's okay. They just put some boards on him for precautionary measures, I guess. Check and make sure he has no whiplash or anything. Good to hear. What happened out there? Did, did he say anything? Uh, nobody said anything yet. It just looks like John didn't pump his brakes up after the restart and drove right into the back and into turn one. Things are going well. Yeah, it's too bad because John was even a lap car, so should have been more careful, I guess. Tough luck. Glad to hear Randy's okay. Yeah, thanks. And indeed, we'll echo those thoughts. It's good to hear that Randy McDonald is all right. Unfortunately, I believe the uh, Sony Handycam has now been re reduced to a pile of rubble. Okay, pace car is out. Our current race leader, Robbie Crouch, number 48, beside him is Junior Hanley. Then La Pearl and Nason on the second row. Beaver Dragon sitting in fifth. We're anticipating a restart in a moment as Robbie Crouch brings the field out of corner one. The front two in the GM Motorsports standings. Hanley and Crouch outside and inside in row number one as the green flag flies and they're racing into turn number one. Hanley on the high side with a bit of an advantage as they hit the corner down the back. Straight away, Hanley in the 72 takes over the lead. Well, uh, the race action now gets back to full tempo. Junior Hanley, six victories already this year. Would love to grab this finale as well. But Robbie Crouch wouldn't mind winning a game at Mosport. No, indeed he wouldn't, but it's going to be a tall order. Junior Hanley has dominated this oval over the last couple of years. He has been virtually untouchable here. Leaders making their way underneath the 82 machine. That's a lapped automobile as they work down the back chute. Hanley, Crouch, Nason, and Roger LaPearl. LaPearl, one of the people to keep an eye on. He always does well on the longer tracks. Now, what is Robbie Crouch up to? Uh, he's not letting Junior Hanley get away, by the way. We have seen Hanley totally dominate in the past. That is not happening at this moment here at Mosport. Two different styles. Whoop, trouble in turn one, a three-car spin. Claude Leclerc in the 11, the six of Danny Knoll Jr. go around, and I believe that's Bill Zardo Sr. behind them in the 46. It looks like everybody's going to get back underway. Knoll is rolling once again. Zardo and Leclerc having some problems. There's Claude back underway, and, uh, well, maybe the 11 will make it. Maybe he won't. Looks like he's hung up on the apron of the racetrack. He's going to try reverse one more time. Uh, I don't know. He's gambling on getting stuck here, I think, just on the lip of this one, and, in fact, that's that will happen to Claude Leclerc. I don't think he's going to get out of there. I don't think so either, and it's going to cost him a lap. Let's see what happens as they get down into the corner. You can see one car getting sideways. That's the 11 of Claude Leclerc. A good piece of driving by the rookie, Danny Knoll Jr., and behind him by Bill Zardo to avoid piling into Claude Leclerc and making a bad situation even worse. Toe truck will come around to get the Leclerc car pulled out of the way. Uh, he and Desardo now a lap down after that incident. Our race leader is Junior Hanley, number 72. Then Robbie Crouch and Ralph Nason will return.
We're back at Mosport for the finale of the GM Motorsport National Stock Car Series. And, uh, of course, Claude Leclerc made it back to pit row. He's back out one more time for the restart. Junior Hanley and Robbie Crouch once again will be the men at the front of the pack as we get set to go back to green. Hanley inside, Crouch outside. A huge jump by Robbie Crouch, and he's away with the lead. Crouch got on the hammer early and apparently caught Junior Hanley napping as the 48 car is out to a big lead now in turn two. I don't think it's that often that we have seen that sort of trick pulled on Junior Hanley this season, but Robbie Crouch did it beautifully and looks like he may in fact be going to be the champion today. Junior Hanley with over 30 years of experience in the stock car racing game is not often taken advantage of on a restart, but Robbie Crouch, who himself has been doing this thing for a while, caught Hanley napping and took the lead away. Let's see if he can hold it now. Crouch in the Buick, car number 48, trying to keep the lead on Junior Hanley, but Hanley has closed it back up on his back bumper as they exit turn number four and head for the front chute. So there's Robbie Crouch by it. Look at this, Mason, you talk about him being strong, uh, strong again, sitting in third spot, although a few car lengths back of the two up front. So far, it's been a two-car race as Hanley and Crouch have uh, been willing to get out in front, push their cars, and get away from the field. Right now, either they're faster than anybody else, or Nason, Roger LaPearl, Beaver Dragon and company are content to let them go, maybe wear themselves out, and come on late in the race to take it away from them. Okay, there's the fight for the overall lead, and then it's uh, Nason and LaPearl, and I think LaPearl is going to take him here. No, we'll go back a little further, in fact, to some of the other action, and it's happening all through the field at this stage, David. Rolly McDonald's got some problems. He's gotten into the back end of somebody, torn up the fiberglass on the left front corner of the King Freight Lines machine, showing a little bit of smoke there. He'll try and circulate around, keep that car rolling until he can catch a yellow and make repairs. Here's Junior Hanley down the back chute, Burst of horsepower pulls him even with Robbie Crouch as they hit turn three. Hanley on the inside has the lead back as they hit four. Now, let's have a look from Robbie Crouch's car as Hanley flashes through. And what will Robbie do getting back up here to corner one? He tries to get in tight on Junior. It will not touch him, though, at this point. They come through and around out of two, and Junior leads in the back straight. Here's the pass once again. Junior Hanley, as we've seen so many times this year, uses the superior horsepower on car number 72, dives to the inside of Crouch, and then just breezes underneath on that inside line as he works the bottom of the racetrack to perfection. The double O, Roger LaPearl, nice, strongly, in fact, sitting there in third spot, and action here along pit row. That's Robbie Thompson in the Jerry's Truck Service Chevrolet. Thompson with some overheating problems. It looks like it's going to be the end of the day, and here's Gord Bennett on pit row. Bennett had been running strongly in the number six position and may have shown the speed early on to run with Hanley and Crouch, but looks like the end of the day for the man they call Bonsai Bennett. Two of the big Ontario favorites, in fact, out of it there. And speaking of Ontario favorites, Junior Hanley, still our race leader. Robbie Crouch, we are looking at here, sitting in second. Crouch now, though, a distant second as Hanley has begun to pull away in the Molson X machine. He has put a good, healthy margin between himself and Robbie Crouch. Crouch, at least for the moment, content to ride in the number two position. Then a long gap back to third. Roger LaPearl in the fourth spot is Ralph Mason. Everybody's got themselves some room all unto themselves right now on the racetrack as this thing begins to space out a bit for middle stages. Actually, uh, they got off to a rather heated tempo <laughs> once again. Uh, this entire series, uh, they've not been starting these uh, races gently. They seem to get right to work. Then it kind of settles down about the stage, David. Well, the days are long gone when in a 200-lap race you can go out and ride around for 150 and then race the final 50. There are simply too many strong cars, too many top teams for anybody oh. to go out there and stroke Danny it. Noel. Oh, Danny Whoa. Noel right in front of Whoa. Junior Hanley, Whoa. and the leader has piled into it. Oh, Can no. you believe it? We spotted Noel sitting there on the track. He didn't realize Hanley was coming up that swiftly, and bang, right into him. Junior Hanley apparently never saw the stalled car number six of Danny Noel Jr. There's his crew chief, Lloyd Heath, and the bad news being relayed on the radio. Let's see what happened here. Coming into the corner, you can see Danny Noel just gets in a little bit too hard on the inside of Beaver Dragon, loops the automobile. Rod, uh, Bill Zardo Jr. with a narrow escape in car number 40. Look at the amount of time. Even though this is on slow motion, you have to wonder how Junior Hanley missed him. Well, he doesn't miss him here, head on into Boy. the side of Danny Knoll, and that's going to be the end of the winning streak for Junior Hanley. Isn't that something? That should be it for uh, Junior Hanley's day. That was a heavy pound. In fact, there's Junior out of the car, looking at the damage right now, picking up uh, some of the fiberglass, and talk about dejected. Now, our race leader, 
is Robbie Crouch, number 48. We'll be back. Junior, <laughs> kind of a rough finish to the uh, season for you. Yeah, we were like running really good and uh, like we're just taking our time and uh, the sun is really bad in that corner and I seen Zardo get sideways but I didn't see Danny Noll and he, he coasted down and I couldn't get stopped. You're okay? Yeah, fine. Feelings hurt? Yeah. I think it's got to be Junior's most embarrassing moment this year. Mind you, he's not had a good weekend at most board, Dave. He hasn't. That car has been facing backwards a, a couple or three times this weekend here at most board. And now, despite the fact that the crew is tearing into that right front corner, it's almost certainly the end of the afternoon for Junior Handley. Okay, Robbie Crouch, the race leader. Roger La Pearl, the big double O, is sitting in second. They should be side by side on this restart. Oh, oh they have a go at each other before the green comes out even. And they're not going to get the green this time as Kevin LePage takes advantage and ducks under nope. anybody. But a yellow. the yellow stays out. A little bit of a bump and run incident as La Pearl and Crouch get into the side of each other. I was just going to comment on the fact that it seems like nobody wants to lead this thing for very long. The leaders seem to be coming to grief. And all of a sudden, Robbie Crouch gets tangled up with Roger LaPearl. In car with Robbie Crouch here, there's LaPearl. Look at this! Having a little oh. bit of a discussion under the yellow flag. Crouch and LaPearl, the two veterans apparently are not happy with each other here. Robbie Crouch apparently feels that Roger LaPearl did him wrong, takes a little run at LaPearl on the back straightaway, and now the chief starter has got the black flag in his hand. Let's see what's going to happen here. Robbie Crouch bobs toward the inside, flag waving from the stand. No, look at this. Robbie pulls right over to the right. He pulls over and stops. They're going to pull them both over. They're going to put Crouch and LaPearl to the back of the pack. Let's look again at how it started. Coming down for the start, Crouch and LaPearl get together, and the right front fender of Crouch's Renarek Buick goes sky high. The field scatters. John Paul Cabana gets a piece of the action as well, and there's no start as they come down out of turn four. It went on from there, as we saw in the in-car shot, as Crouch apparently got a little bit of retaliation. And as a result, here's the rent machine of Robbie Crouch, dead last on the field, along with Roger LaPearl, and another leader has taken himself out of the running. Ah, but the new leaders are up in the front row, Kevin LePage and Jean-Paul Cabana getting set for the restart. LePage and Cabana, then Dan Beatty and Jim Wiersma, the young local, has moved himself into fourth. This time we've got a clean start and a green start and LePage pulls away in the 21. Cabana is second, Dan Beatty is third, then Harmon Beaver Dragon making his presence felt in the number four spot. Well, I guess Kevin LePage is doing what he can to uh, kind of fill in the slot left by Junior Hanley. So Kevin uh, now leading at most board. It's been a while since he did that. You couldn't blame Kevin LePage for being a little uncomfortable right now. First, Randy McDonald led it. He went out in an extremely violent fashion. Junior Hanley led it. He went out in a just slightly less violent fashion. Robbie Crouch gets into a little bit of an altercation. He's back on the tail end. But for now, it's a three-man fight at the front. LePage in the 21, 5A Cabana, and the 53 of Dan Beatty. In fact, look out for Dan Beatty. He's dabbling on the inside here against Cabana. No, he decides to pull in one more time up on Jean Paul's tailpipe. He'll not have a go yet, but but he looks ready to jump. Dan Beatty is a man that's really come on strong on the GM Motorsport Series and the American Canadian Tour. Won his first ever ACT feature a couple of weeks ago in what is unquestionably the circuit's toughest race on a very high bank, quarter mile bull ring in Barrie, Vermont. Dan Beatty is a man on the mission right now and he is running solidly in the number three spot. On his back bumper is Harmon Beaver Dragon, then the three of Jim Wiersma. Well, maybe we're just thinking overly, thinking about the negative side of leadership. I thought I saw smoke out of a LePage tire, but uh, let's keep an eye on uh, this new group of leaders. Uh, still Jean-Paul Cabana, and Dan Beatty takes a move down to the inside. Nope, Cabana cuts him off. Jean-Paul Cabana, the veteran, knows exactly where to run on this racetrack to keep Dan Beatty behind him. Cabana sometimes can make the mess of a, of a slower car. A couple of cars out of shape, going way high on the track. Steve Monroe and Yvonne Bedard. Bedard's got a flat right front tire. That was the problem there. And those two drivers did a nice job to keep it off the fence. And side by side in front, look at this! A new race leader, Jean-Paul Cabana, is a leader at most sports. Oh, would he love that 499. Indeed he would. Cabana with a great move to the inside of LePage. And Dan Beatty, the youngster, says, 
thank you very much, or merci beaucoup, Mr. Cabana, leads him right on through for second place. So the veteran Cabana and the young man Beanie now take the point. Oh, the crowd love this, to see Jean-Paul Cabana back out in front here in Canada. Uh, <laughs> could be a first, I think, in 1991. It could, without a question, be a first. It has been a nightmare of a season for the driver of the PP Electric car number 5A. He's had mechanical failures, crashes, and now he's going to have a battle. Look at Dan Beatty drive to the inside of Cabana off turn four. Dan Beatty, the Vermont driver, now neck and neck with the veteran for the lead. What a great race down the front straightaway. In a turn one, Beatty on the inside, Cabana on the outside. It looks like Beatty's going to take it over now. And there he is. In fact, Beatty does leap in front and it seems like just moments ago David you and I were talking about the tremendous bad luck that Cabana's had this year I swear Beatty had a broken foot a couple of weeks ago. He did indeed he was involved in, a, in an off track accident that caused him uh, to suffer a, a broken leg in two different places. He has raced almost half the season now with a broken leg but it certainly has not affected his throttle foot as he is beginning to pull away from Cabana now. There's Beatty the new race leader at most port and a Replay on this pass procedure, nicely done. Both drivers right on the ragged edge. As you can see, the back end of those cars sliding through turn one and two. But Dan Beatty takes the set, cranks it left, and stampedes to the inside of Cabana for the lead. Now, what is Kevin LePage thinking? He's uh, sitting back in third. He's going to let these two dice it out for a while. Actually, uh, he'll worry about Robbie Crouch first. He was in third a moment ago. Now he's in fourth as Robbie Crouch, they call him the Tampa Tornado, and he is storming from the back of the field. I guarantee he's got a little bit of an anger going right now after that incident between he and Roger LaPearl. And Robbie Crouch, flapping, fiberglass, and all is on his way back to the front of this field. Whoa, we got so excited about these new race leaders and the new names out front here. Uh, we tended to ignore the fact that Robbie Crouch was at the back of this entire field. Now he's running third. He is right on the rear spoiler of John Paul Cabana as Cabana works around the Rob Snowden automobile and down the back straightaway. Those two battling has enabled Dan Beatty to pull away to a rather healthy lead right now. The battle is for second. Cabana in the 5A, 48 crouch. You can see there's not a whole lot left of the front end of the body on car number 48, but there's enough for Robbie Crouch as he ducks to the inside of Cabana. Here's the challenge for the runner-up spot. Cabana Whoa. loops it. Look out all the way around, brushes the wall, and rolls it to a stop. Oh, man. Lady oh. Luck has frowned on Cabana again. Oh, no, I shouldn't have mentioned that luck earlier today. It was going so beautifully for Jean-Paul Cabana. And in the meantime, we look at Robbie Crouch's car. I swear it's flying away on him as he continues around Mosport. That's a doubly good break for Robbie Crouch. Cabana's spin not only hands Crouch the number two position, but the resulting caution flag is going to allow the 48 car to close up on the leader, Dan Beatty. This is just a case of Cabana trying too hard, too fast. Gets in hard in the 5A. The back end comes around, and Cabana very, very fortunate not to duplicate the crash earlier on by Randy McDonald. Well, we'll look at this uh, one more time. It really, it's all in Jean-Paul Cabana's hands. It just flies away on him. He has no one to blame on this one, Dave. Do our cameramen get danger pay up on the outside of the wall like that? I would not want to be standing there with a 3,000-pound race car coming backwards. Back to the race action, and Jean-Paul Cabana is doing what he can to at least, I would think, get back to pit row. Yes, indeed, he will. In fact, he comes uh, streaming along the pit lane just back of Rob Clark. Here are the current race leaders. Dan Beatty is in front of number 53, but Robbie Crouch is beside him, and 48 will be back. Oh, what else can happen at Mosport? We are back for the finale this year. John Paul Cabana, who led, is in uh, along pit row in 5A. There's Brad Layton in car number 1X, currently the top rookie on the GM Motorsport Series. Our Michael Charbon had a chance to talk with him earlier. The Rookie of the Year Award is a coveted title. Former winners like Randy McDonald and Russ Erlen have gone on to win the Canadian GM Championship. This year, a man who's in contention for the Rookie of the Year is the 1X of Bradley. Well, the first time out at uh, Lee Speedway, it was, I had been there before, but not in these cars. Um, it, was, it was close to home, so it wasn't so bad. I really got a taste of it. We went to London, Ontario, and Sinair, and uh, Halifax, and them tracks. It's, it's quite an experience. Uh, the crew's been behind me 100%. Uh, I've made a lot of rookie mistakes, uh, but they've always supported me, and. Uh, Anne Lee Dolls and all my um, 
sponsors have really been behind me, you know, and all the support from my family. So the traveling hasn't uh, handed me too bad. Uh, but we're looking forward to next year, and the traveling, uh, I think, will just get easier. The danger part of it, um, it really doesn't cross my mind. I have a lot of confidence in the car builder, uh, Steve Levitt, Action Racing, builds our cars, and, um, and the crew prepares it 110%. So as far as um, danger, it's got you know, a lot to do with if you really believe in what you're running, and I do. Uh, the instinct, you know, it's, I'm going much faster than I was before, so your reflex have to be more so. Um, I've you know, been working out all winter long and I feel pretty confident in my health. And, um, so you know, you really have to have your mind 100% on what you're doing. Um, most of the guys in the series, really, they don't fly off the handle. It's a real bunch of good guys. They got a lot of time, a lot of money in their uh, cars. So um, they're not driving erratic. And um, so it's, it's a good feeling. But I think the rookie helps. You know, they give you a little bit more room and what they would if you're running on top. So keep your eyes on the 1X of Brad Layden as he continues his charge to the 1991 Rookie of the Year Championship. Delightful young man. We're in car with him now as we prepare for another green. Brad Layton with a V6 here just back of Claude Leclerc. That V6 power plant not ideally suited for these longer tracks, but he's hung in there well today, and he's going to get himself a decent finish. At the front, Dan Beatty and Robbie Crouch poised for the restart. Crouch on the inside has the lead as they hit the line, and as they take the green, Junior Hanley is back on the racetrack. A number of laps down. Look out, we've got trouble in turn one. Jim Wiersma in car number three, the 40 of Bill Zardo Jr. Bring out the caution flag one more time, and we've got cars all over the track. That's Bill Zardo Sr. up against the wall in car number 46. So this caution flag involves both Zardos, and guess who's right in the middle of it? All that fluid on the racetrack, that belongs to Junior Hanley. Came out of the pits and drove right into the middle of another mess. Isn't that something? Uh, all we had to do was lose Pete Shepard. We've lost the entire Zardo gang here today, but both Zardos out of it, and where's my there just spinning uh, out of the way? Actually, quite a bit of damage in that one. Uh, well, this is the tame part of it. On the other side of the racetrack, Hanley and Bill Zardo Sr. got into it, and I guarantee now that will be the end of the day for Junior Hanley. Looks like for Bill Zardo Sr. as well, as the all-on crane service machine goes up on the hook. Crouch and Beatty will set for it when we come back. We're back at Mosport, ready for the crunch. We mean the final four laps for the GM Motorsport 200. Ready for that restart, and it's Robbie Crouch and Dan Beatty up front. Crouch on the inside in the 48, Beatty on the outside in the 53. Don't count out Beaver Dragon. The veteran lurks right behind in row two, along with LePage and LaPearl. Four laps to go, and it's anybody's ball game. Here they come, down the back straightaway, heading for turn three. The green flag is in hand, set to come out. Crouch is away with the lead. The green is out, and the challenge is for second. Beaver Dragon down on the inside of Dan Beatty. Beatty coming back on Crouch. The Vermonter, the young man Dan Beatty, will not give it up on that outside lane. Hey, they are still side by side, heading up to corner three. I thought Beaver was going to dive in between those two for a moment. He certainly thought better of it, and maybe better than he did. Crouch leads it, though, coming out of four. Field sorting back out to single file as the laps wind down. Crouch away with the lead. Beatty in second. Beaver Dragon in third. Then LePage and Roger LaPearl. Beatty down to the inside. He is not at all intimidated by the six time champion. We got a spin in turn four. Rob Snowden takes it right down pit road. Field stays green, and we are looking for the checkered flag in just another three laps. Well, this would be another one of these amazing stories we've had in 1991 if Robbie Crouch can pull this off. He uh, was sent to the back of the field. He now leads it, but Dan Beatty wants a win as well. The track where everyone expected Junior Hanley to dominate instead looks like it's going to go to Robbie Crouch as the Tampa Tornado this time will get the two lap to go indicator. The car doesn't look like much, but it's fast enough to stay at the front right now. Crouch, Beatty, Dragon, LePage, and LaPearl with two to go. Let us not ignore Beaver Dragon, uh, Kevin LePage. In fact, there's some interesting fighting going on for third place at this stage, but it's beginning to be a bit of a runaway for Robbie Crouch and Dan Beatty out front. No question, it's a two-car break right now. They come down the front straightaway, put a lap on Cabana. White flag is out. Robbie Crouch a half a mile away from victory in the GM Motorsport 200. Beatty all by himself in second. Dragon hanging on to third, then LePage and LaPearl. Robbie Crouch heading for turn three. He can almost see pay dirt from here. 
The fiberglass flying away in the Robbie Crouch vehicle, number 48. The crew is on its feet. He comes up to the end, the checkered flag. Robbie Crouch wins the GM Motorsport 200. Dan Beatty finishes second, followed by Beaver Dragon. What a comeback for Robbie Crouch with all the problems he had here today at Sport. Comes from the back to win it. A great day for young Dan Beatty as he claims an outstanding second place finish in car number 53. And there are the remains of the winning entry here this afternoon. The Glen Wright Motorsports, Renarek Buick of Robbie Crouch. For Robbie, third victory in 1991 in the series. He won the first event, in fact, at Sport. Robbie Crouch, Dan Beatty, and Beaver Dragon once again the top three. Kevin LePage and Roger LaPerro with another strong run in fourth and fifth. Oh, look at this trophy. Uh, it seems to me that we started the uh, GM Motorsport Series this year with a Robbie Crouch victory, and what better way to end it in 1991, Robbie? Yeah, it was a good race for us. Uh, you know, we're happy to do well here. And of course, some people had some problems, and we've got, had some problems, got sent back a few times, but came out on top, so it's a good time. I think you'd have to agree with all of us uh, as spectators that it was a bizarre one today. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I thought it was a strange race. <laughs> First Randy out, uh, Junior. Uh, uh, what were your feelings at that point? I, I figured I was next. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would almost think so today. And then a black flag. Uh, offended by that? Or? Yeah. I certainly am. Anyway, uh, I think it was one of the most dramatic charges we've seen in the series this year to go from uh, the back right to the front and win this event today, Robbie. Yeah, thank you. Well done, and the trophy is yours, my friend. And the final countdown for the GM Series 91. Junior Hanley, the man on top. Beaver Dragon overtakes Crouch for the number two position. A tie for ninth, Bill Zardo and Brad Layton. Well, for 1991, he decided to come back full-time in this race series, and he took the championship away with him. Here's the man, Mr. Junior Hanley. Well done, Junior. What a 1991. Well, we didn't have too good a day today, but we were like, you know, we had a good uh, series, and I really like to thank General Motors for having this series, and Budweiser and all of them, and like my sponsors and stuff too, so I really like to thank everybody. I'll tell you, you made a marvelous show for uh, Canadians uh, all over the country, and of course there are still championships and uh, money to be gained, uh, obviously, Junior, so your season is not done yet. No, we still got three races to go, and we got a chance to win the other series, but like, it's a lot of, you know, like we didn't have too good of luck here today, and if we don't have good luck in another race, we'll be out of that series. You betcha. We have a very special gentleman here. In fact, he happens to be our general director for GM Parts, so ready to make the presentation today, Mr. John Markham. Uh, John? Junior, it gives me a great deal of pleasure that on behalf of General Motors of Canada to present you with this third annual GM Motorsports uh, Racing Trophy and Cup and the title for 1991. Congratulations, and uh, good luck to you. You're the champion, Junior! <laughs> Indeed, a round of applause. And as we look at the final results from the GM Motorsport 200 and the other final standings for 1991, Jim Paulson, it's been another great season of racing on the GM Motorsport National Series. Seemed to get better as each and every event came by. I don't know how we can possibly top this next year, but they'll try, David. They're going to try and find a way, and that's it from Motorsport. The GM Motorsport Hour has been brought to you by General Motors of Canada Limited. Quality GM parts, the expert choice. And by Sony, the one and only. This program is copyright and is strictly for the use of our audience. Any reproduction in whole or in part is strictly prohibited without the express written consent of the GM Motorsport Hour. <laughs>